The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon to the to the crowd that is coming in from overseas. Uh, just want to confirm, Cindy, can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Thanks, Amir. Great, great. So with that, I'd like to uh, kick off today's webcast uh, on the topic of preparing and planning for your year-end close with Dynamics 365 and AX. This is a very popular topic that we not only were getting uh, interest from from the UG community, but also direct interest from a lot of our client base. I know many of you guys are burdened with the stresses of closing books, either from last year or you want to get a head start and put the right person in place for 2018. So we hope to give you the following takeaways so that you can uh, find a lot of success with that this year. So with that, I'm going to give you guys a quick intro into who we are, and then I'll uh, pass it over to Cindy Scott for the heavy lift today's webcast. So quick background on who Avantico is. We were founded in 2006. We've been a Microsoft certified partner ever since. We have a dynamic uh, practice around uh, 365 ops and finance. We also have a practice group around CRM, so all the modules that entail field service, customer service, project service, and the base sales and marketing. We also have a BI practice group and a public sector practice group. We are headquartered in sunny San Diego, California, and have offices that span all the way up the West Coast through Temecula, Irvine, and Los Angeles. We also have a European presence with an office in Copenhagen, Denmark, and London in the UK. Uh, our vertical expertise is mainly around manu manufacturing distribution. We also have groups around professional financial services, retail and e-commerce, and as mentioned, we do have a public sector practice group. Uh, Avantico, as mentioned, is a full stack partner, everything from 3X, 365 AX, and CRM. We do ERP and CRM evaluations, uh, just to really get you guys in, in the works if you are on the Greenfield side, and then we do everything all the way through to both post live support. We also are a value added reseller. We do have stand standalone products and extended arms around uh, address verification validation. This is in partnership with Experian. We also have a few mobile solutions for workflow approval and management of AX remotely, and we also have a, a very popular advanced public sector module. And with that, uh, my name is Amir Kashniati. I'll kind of be the liaison during today's webcast, but I will go ahead and pass it over to Cindy Scott to take the reins from here. Thank you, Cindy. All right, thanks, Amir. Uh, thanks, and good morning to everyone. Uh, as you know, today we will be covering the D365 year-end close process. It's a very quick and easy process, and one of the more flexible ones you'll find in D365 and AX. So you may have noticed when you begin your new fiscal year that the opening balances in your balance sheet and trial balances are, are absent. They're just not there. They haven't rolled forward yet. We'll be going through the process that rolls the balance sheet balances into the new fiscal year and closes out the P&L balances to retained earnings. Uh, what we will not be reviewing is just the routine monthly close steps in this webinar, uh, things like the foreign currency revaluation, inventory close, all your normal adjustments that you normally do every month. Um, those you already have your processes in place, you have checklist in place, we won't be covering those. So the year-end close is the unique process that happen, uh, needs to happen once a year to roll the balances forward. All right, so what we'll be covering today uh, is the, the year in close from start to finish. Uh, the first thing will be the GL parameters that are available to you. Normally these are set just one time and you don't need to touch them again. Uh, we'll be running the year end close and checking the results. Uh, I'll be showing you the, the new multi-company close in D365. Um, up until D365, this was not available um, in the prior prior version. So I'll, I'll show you that as well. Um, so we'll run it, run it, we'll validate the results, um, and then we'll go through just a couple common questions. Um, you know, what if the auditors have, need, you know, um, have us make adjustments, what do we do? Um, how do we rerun it? Um, what if we, I ran it too early and I want to undo it? Things like that. 
Okay, so the first thing we'll, we'll be reviewing in D365 is the parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and cut over at this point to AX. All right, so this is uh, D365. Many of you are familiar with it already. Uh, the parameters, we're going to go to our navigation pane and general ledger and uh, the general ledger parameters. And uh, we're going to be in the first uh, ledger link here. I'm going to collapse this first one, and we're only going to be looking at the fiscal year close fast tab. So these are the, the parameters. This is a, a, a setting that I like um, for most cases. Uh, the first parameter that I have turned on is called delete close of your transactions during transfer. Uh, what this does, many times clients do need to run the, the year and close more than once. So this controls how the subsequent closes are handled. So you run it the first time. If you have to run it a second time or a third time, what this will do if it's turned on, it'll delete the prior year's close and then give you a fresh a fresh, uh, a fresh, um, a fresh set of transactions. So if you have this set to no, it'll just give you the net change every time you rerun it. Um, I like to just see mine as a bulk entry. So each time you rerun it, it just gives you a new, a brand new entry and deletes the old one. Uh, the second parameter is create closing transactions during transfer. This is more used for the profit and loss accounts. Um, if you have this set to yes, it'll actually create a closing transaction on those accounts. And it can be a little confusing for um, like financial statements. It, it, financial statements, you have to, you'd actually have to tell it to do not include closing transactions. Otherwise, you, you'd end up with, with balances that just zero out. It'll take normal transactions, add the closing, and it nets to zero. So if you have this turned on, you just have to be aware for your financial statements. Um, in case you get some funny results where you're, you're, you know, the, the balance is netting to zero. Um, set fiscal year status to permanently closed. I have this set to no. I always recommend that you never permanently close um, the periods. Um, you are not able to reopen those. So um, you can always put the, the periods on hold, which prevents transactions, and that's what we, rec we recommend. Uh, voucher number must be filled in. This is optional. Um, if you have this set to yes, you'll be required to just manually set a voucher number when you run the close. So either I could go either way on this one. And then these last two are more for public sector close that that we will be not not be covering today. Uh, the last parameter I want to mention is um, under the accounts for automatic transactions. And the year-end result posting. So, so under the accounts for automatic transactions, the GL account you set here for the year-end result, um, this will be the one that defaults when you when you uh, run the close. Uh, this generally sets to your retained earnings account. So you can always override this when you actually run the cl the close, but um, it's nice to have it default for you. Let's go back to the presentation real quick. Okay, so that's the parameters. Okay, now we're going to go jump in and run the year-end close, check some results. Um, so we'll be going to general ledger, period close, and year-end close. Let's go back to our navigation pane. And one thing I, I want to show you first, um, I did clear my data before this. So I want to show you first what, what your trial balance will look like before the close. So I want to show you the numbers before the close, and then we'll, look, we'll run the close, and then look at them after. So I'm going to go to our trial balance form. And let's look at this year. So we're in 2018, so I'm going to look at uh, this year, current year. So my date range uh, updates to January through December 2018. I'm working on a calendar year. And this just takes a few seconds. OK, I don't have a lot of transactions with my demo data, um, but you can also see that the opening balances are zero, and I'm not really seeing any, any other GL accounts. I'm just seeing a few where I've had some in and out transactions. And I happen to know that there, there are, you know, I have a full full trial balance from 2017 that's not showing. So the balances just aren't rolled forward to this year yet. 
let's look at the 2000, 2017 closing balances. And that's going to be what I want to show up for 2018 and roll forward. So I'm going to go previous year, look at year ending December 31st, 2017. Okay, so here we see we have a number of accounts with balances and they do in fact have closing balances. So these closing balances are what I should see rolling forward to um, 2018 for the balance sheet accounts. And then uh, we'll also look at retained earnings after the retained earnings, um, you know, the, the P&L accounts will, will roll forward to the retained earnings account. So this is what we're gonna be keeping our eye on. Right, so let's jump to our year and close. I'm gonna go back to our navigation pane. I'm still in general ledger and I want to go to our, uh, our period close and year end close. All right, so this looks a little bit different in D365. Most of it works the same as the prior versions. So what's new here is I can create um, fiscal year close groupings. So if you're one of those companies that has a lot of companies and you don't, you know, it's a little tedious to run your year end close for each separate company like you had to in prior versions, we can create a grouping so that we can close many companies at once. So let's go ahead and create a new grouping. And let's title this US companies. And they do have to be within the same fiscal calendar. So in my case, I'm going fiscal year. And then I'm gonna add the legal entities um, that I want to run together. So in my case, I'm just gonna go with two. I'm gonna go USSI and USMF. I'm just gonna mark both, click select and okay. And if I wanna add more, I could just simply click add. If I screwed up, I could click delete. Okay, so we have two here. The, uh, the first one, USMF, um, the date of last year-end close is populated because um, this, this wasn't a prior group. So I reset some data and, and it does see that this has been run before. So that's already populated. Okay, so I have my, my two companies here. What I can do now, another piece of the close is how the financial dimensions transfer. So there's two sections down below here. I'm gonna concentrate on the USSI company. The first parameter is for the balance sheet dimensions. So this is asking, do I want the dimensions on my balance sheet accounts to transfer? In my case, I'm gonna uh, hit no. A lot of companies don't, uh, don't use dimensions on their balance sheet accounts, some do. So in my case, I'm gonna click no. Um, but if you do use your balance sheet dimensions, especially if you were, um, you know, use the balancing by dimension, you'll want this turned on. Um, and as I mentioned uh, before, the year-end close is, is flexible. Um, if you do something wrong anywhere along the line here, you can always redo it. And I'll, we'll get to that a little later. So if you're not sure and you happen to pick the wrong one, you know, don't panic. You can always rerun it, you know, after you update the selection. Okay, the second part of this is the profit and loss dimensions. So there's, there's two options here. I'm gonna to go to department. Okay, so department's a common one that's used. The two options are close single and close all. For close all, it's, that, what that means is it's going to take the balance in each, each um, string of dimensions and close that out to, to retained earnings accordingly. So if you use uh, department and cost center and business unit and you have you know, a bunch of values there, it's gonna transfer according to all those values that, um, for the total for all of those. Um, some clients don't want that. They just want um, single default um, dimension values to be used for each of the dimensions as far as the retained earnings account is concerned. Um, so that it could be for, for one or for all. So some like they have a default of 00-000 or you know, default, 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 something like that. Um, so in order to show you how this works, I'm gonna say for department, I want to just default a specific department that I want these to, um, to close out to. So in this case, let's just uh, select um, the operations value for um, 023 for department. 
So the other dimensions that might be used will close accordingly to how they were posted to on profit loss accounts. For this specific department, I'm gonna say I want all department dimension values to go to 23. All right, um, so that's it there. And again, once you have these set the first times, there's a lot of, not a lot of thought that goes into these. You know, you just kind of glance, you ran it the last way, this way, and, and um, not a lot of thinking past that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and run this. So I'm gonna click on the run fiscal close button. And in this case, I'm just gonna run it for USSI. I could run it for both, uh, just simply check both, but I'm just gonna run it for my one company. And I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna select the fiscal year I wanna close. So in this case, I'm in 2018, but I wanna run it for 2017. So you always wanna run it for the year end um, of the year you're closing. Again, I, for the parameters, I had the voucher blank. Um, for this purpose, since we're gonna be rerunning this a couple of times, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a voucher number in here. I usually just kinda of go um, the order um, uh, I kind of number it as far as how many times I've run it. So I'm just going to go year in 2017-1. Um, undo previous close. I'll go through this a little later. When you're actually running this, you want this head to know. Um, so what this does, it actually uh, cancels the close. So you want it defaults to no and you want it set as no. Um, the one other thing that's interesting in D365, um, it, it's requiring you to run it in batch so it, it has the batch processing um yes um and i think that's just for for performance um it, it'll run pretty quick though so that's turned on and we're going to go ahead and click okay all right so this uh this finishes fairly quickly i don't have a whole lot of data there what will happen when this is when this is finished, I'll see that the date of last year and close here. Right now it's blank. I will see that it it updates um, when it's done. I can always uh, go check the batch to confirm it's done. Uh, but in this case, um, we're just going to wait for this to, to populate here and that'll be our indication that it's completed. Okay, so I just, I'm hitting my refresh in the uh, in the upper right. Okay, all right, so it took 30 seconds or so for, for my little bit of data here. So it has today's date, it shows it's closed. So now we wanna go validate our results. So I'm gonna go back to the trial balance that we were in before. We, we, sh we should know well opening balances. And I'm going to run it again for 2018. So our current year, my dates update to 2018. I calculate the balances. Okay, so now, if you recall, uh, before this, we, we only saw four accounts here and the opening balances were zero. Now we see our opening balances here and we're seeing that, that they've rolled forward. So, um, so we, we know that looks good. One other thing we can do here, um, I'm gonna look at the balances now. So I'm gonna look at the, um, the opening balances for balance sheet account and for the retained earnings. So let's look at, uh, for example, this Euro Bank account. I'm going to go to all transactions. And then I'm going to look at only the opening balances. So if I look at the type and let me actually back off for a second. So the type normally what you're used to seeing is operating here for um, the year end close. You'll see these opening balances. You'll see them in the bottom of the, the form here, but I'm going to filter on that as well. So that's what the opening balances are. Um, is for that year-end close. Okay, so we see um, our opening balances from 2017 as a record, and then we also see our new opening balance for 2018 has rolled forward. Um, prior to this, these two transactions didn't exist. We see the voucher number I entered just to have something there. If you don't enter a voucher, voucher, it's not required. This will simply be blank, no harm. Um, 
and then for this, we actually see um, two transactions. Some of you might have noticed. Uh, it gave us a transaction in USD and one in Euro. So it will transfer those by, by currency. And let's go back. And I also want to look at our retained earnings account. So I believe that was 300160. That's not it. What was that? I must have typed that in there wrong. Okay. All right, so our retained earnings here, I also want to look at the transactions. And these are these are all opening it's by nature of our retained earnings account. So if I um So if I look here, we see our, our opening transactions for, okay, I see. Um, I was a little thrown off. The department I, I thought was the first dimension, it's actually here. So if you recall, we fixed our department to 23. And you'll see everywhere where there was a department that could be used, we see it's 23. Uh, the other dimensions, it, is, it rolled over to whatever dimension was used um, in the actual profit loss. For retained earnings, we're going to see a little bit more um, transactions because of the uh, dimension values that it closed by, um, and then also by currency. Um, so that's what we're seeing here and how it closed. Um, what we're going to do now uh, is we're going to rerun it again. We're going to say, you know what? I didn't want to use dimension 23. I meant to use dimension, you know, something else, maybe dimension 25. Um, and then we're going to um, come back here and check the results. Um, the rerunning, you can also do if you had to make adjustments. So if the auditor comes back two months later and says, okay, we need this adjustment in your prior fiscal year, um, you can always rerun this as well and create, create your new entries. Okay, so let's go back to our year and close. So we're back in general ledger, period close, year and close. <clears throat> and we want to go to our US companies, uh, fiscal, fiscal close group, and our USSI company. And I want to put this in edit mode. I had decided I don't want to close the department to 23. I want to close it to something else. So I'm going to put this in edit mode. And let's say we want to close this to 25. Okay. And we're going to run this again. Select USSI, click OK. We're going to do the same thing, 2017. Uh, and let's just for kicks put year in 2017-2. Uh, we don't want to undo. So even though we're redoing it, we're not undoing it. Undoing just clears them. So we just we still want this to be no. It's going to run in the background again. And we're going to click OK. And because this time, uh, if I hit refresh, uh, because the date is still today's date, I, I wouldn't know. So we could just wait, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. Or what I could I do? I could actually go check the batch. So I'm going to just duplicate this tab. And I'm going to go look at the batch. So let me go to systems administration. And look at the batch jobs. And this one's called run fiscal close. Unless you change it. And let's sort. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we can see it's actually ex executing right now.
Okay. Should be done any second. It's probably finishing up. It usually doesn't take that long for my little demo data. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the trial balance. See, see if it's finished. We're still at 2018. Okay, and let's go to our retained earnings. Okay, so it did complete, uh, and you'll see that our department now has updated from 23 to 25. So you can see that here, all the department, this is the third, third dimension, or second dimension technically, um, and then our voucher changed too. So you see, we, we had that parameter that cleared out. We had a parameter set to yes to delete the prior year's closing uh, transactions and then you know rebuild um, every time we rerun. So we have a whole new voucher, 01, uh, first voucher dash 01 doesn't exist anymore. Um, and it just gave us a brand new load. Um, and then now it has our, our new dimension. Okay, good. And then the last thing, one thing I've seen, and I've had this question a couple times, um, some clients will accidentally run the close for the current year. So we're in 2018. They accidentally run it for the year ending 12-31-2018 or something like that. Um, and then, you know, they have these balances for, you know, that don't make sense. They have uh, opening balances in 2019, which, you know, are, you know they don't like looking at. So if that's the case and you just want to undo it because the numbers are misleading and you just don't want to look at them, um, you can undo it. Um, so let's say I just, this was too early to run the close and I don't like looking at it. I don't want people thinking the numbers are final. I can just simply undo that close. So we'll undo what we just did. So in this case, I want to um, open up our same run yet fiscal year close form. Click OK. And I want to set it back to the 2017. And we don't need a voucher. It's gonna it's gonna undo it, but you know we could put something in there um, like this. It won't show because there's not going to be anything there. But that's what this parameter for undo previous close. I'm gonna click, click yes and click OK. And in this case, so last time we, we had gone to the batch job, um, um, which finally ended, of course, um, there's a new one waiting. So we had gone there because this date was still today's date. So we couldn't tell if this had actually updated or if it was referencing the prior close. So when you run the undo, it actually clears this date of last year and closed. So even though like 2016 has already been closed, um, um, you'll still, th this is just a point of reference. So 2016 is still closed. It'll, it'll still blank out for 2017. Just saying what's the last, um, the last update on this field. So on this one, I'm just going to hit refresh a few times. Great, all right, so it's blanked out. I know it's finished and we're just gonna look at our trial balance one last time. And we're set to 2018, calculate balances. Seems like this takes a few seconds, but according to Microsoft, the time elapsed is zero. Okay, and now we're back to where we started. So it's cleared our opening balances, we're reset. Um, if, if you wanna go make sure that the prior fiscal year close, let's say for 2016 hasn't been affected, you could always do that. So we can look at the prior year, prior year, let's get that up. And 
and then um, so it's there. The priority has the opening balances, and we can just further verify again uh, by going to the transactions and and filtering on opening. Um, just to kind of have a different way to to check ourselves. So the 2017 opening balance is still there from 2016 close. So so easy enough. Um, as I mentioned, it, it it is one of the more forgiving and flexible processes in AX. Um, sometimes you, you know, in, in general in AX, you, you post something, you do something and, you know, it can be a little bit of a headache to undo it or, you know, um, reverse it or, or so forth. But this is quite, quite forgiving and, and, and easy. Um, and that's it. That's it. Um, Amir, I'll hand this back to you. That's, that's the presentation. Uh, Amir, uh, were there any questions? Can you hear me okay, Cindy? I can. Okay, great. Gotta love being muted. Yeah, so, yeah, no problem. So we have um, we have a couple questions in the pane, um, and guys, please continue to uh, type in your questions. We'll, we'll answer them one by one as they come in. Uh, the first one we have, Cindy, is can I change up the legal entities in the year-end close groupings after the close has already been run? Yes, yes. Again, very forgiving. If you have to uh, change, and I think what they're talking about is um, the groupings here. Um, so if I had to add more of these, I can. I, so this has already been run and changed. We can add any, as long as we're in the same uh, fiscal, um, fiscal year, you can. I can you know, add this one, select it. Um, and just simply add it here. You can also remove it. You know, I can take out this one, put it in another grouping. Um, so yeah, no, no, no restrictions there. Good question. And then the second question in the queue is: Are there any known performance issues or requirements to run after hours? Um, yeah, D three sixty five. Of course, it's newer. Um, I haven't had a lot of exposure to, to um, new client closes with a lot of data. Um, prior versions, I, I never ran into performance issues, and there there were no after hours requirements. Um, typically, it would run, you know, for a normal client between like five and ten minutes. Um, however, if you have a lot of dimensions. Um, that are going to be closed to retained earnings, um, or a lot, you know, a lot of different dimension values. Some have, you know, n dimensions they're using, and if you, you know, look at all the different combinations of dimension values, um, that can take a little while. So, um, oh, and with D365, again, this is the first time um, in AX where you can close more than one company at a time. So if you have a lot of companies with a lot of dimensions, it, it can very well take a little while. Um, so test it first if you're not sure. Um, they, um, again, this is you, in D365, you run, it's running by batch, so that will help. Um, um, so again, smaller companies shouldn't take long and no big deal to do during hours, um, but larger companies, a lot of dimensions, maybe put it you know, in the batch, just set it to run after hours if you're not sure, or test it first just, just to see. All right, that was a great question. Great, great, great. So I don't see any more uh, questions in the queue right now. Cindy, if you don't mind just switching over to the PowerPoint so we can yes. uh, just reference the contact information. Yep. So in case, for the rest of you guys, if, if you do have questions after the fact or your team has questions on the recording that we will be sending out, feel free to email me directly, akh at avantico.com. I have an office line there as well. And uh, what we can do is uh, we can answer any of your questions that come in after the fact, or um, we can also provide you with future webinars and um, topics we, we will be covering. Thank you, Cindy, for flipping it to this slide. So our learning lab has all our 2018 webinars. We have 25 other ones scheduled and a handful of others um, planning to be added in in between. So a lot of different topics on a lot of uh, requests uh, basically from from the user group and from you guys directly and our social handles are there as well for uh, up-to-date news on everything dynamics so with that I uh, want to thank you again Cindy and thank you all for joining um, and look forward to seeing you guys through the year thank you all all right thanks Mayor.